Is SpaceX Starlink a military platform? Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. Love that fireside, that smokiness of the lap song, guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're going to be talking a little bit about the military and SpaceX and how they are associated or not associated. This has been a big question, especially with the Ukrainian war with Russia back and forth. And there was a lot of controversy about what he allowed and didn't allow and where he gave access and not access and it went back and forth and eventually Elon came to the public on X and said this is exactly how it went and what they were saying or how they said it went was not exactly how it actually all went down. So his original intent was to provide SpaceX Starlink for humanitarian purposes. So when a country has some type of disaster, maybe there's a hurricane or flooding or war or whatever it is and community communications are lost, he would provide SpaceX Starlink for them to be able to access emergency services and stuff like that. That was the whole idea. Well, that kind of ended up going sideways. He saw it went sideways. So what he's doing is changing it up a little bit using what is called Star Shield. And Star Shield is basically what we're going to be talking about today and how it is different and the same as Starlink. And I want to get into this with you because it is something that is of conversation. A lot of people have been talking about it and some people that are on one side don't like it. Some people on the other side like it. And it's like this kind of give and take back and forth. But I do think that Elon Musk is correct in kind of segregating the sides of SpaceX so that you have a military division that is paid for by the military and then you have a consumer or business division as we see with Starlink where they have RVs and they have people at home, residential, they have business class, they have maritime for in the ocean, they also have your aviation for aircraft and this type of thing. So anyways, let's get into this. I ended up reading about six articles or so, I don't know, maybe seven. This is what I do on this channel, right? I read a whole bunch of articles and I look at how biased each one is. And if something is just too overly aggressively biased, I'll just take out that paragraph. Just to give you an idea, I read articles from Tesla Roddy, ABC, NBC, Fox, uh, MSNBC, uh, TechCrunch, a whole bunch of different places. And just to get an idea of how people spin this and then only take the accurate information, almost the quotes of it. Now, TechCrunch did a pretty good job. Some of this stuff had to be removed because, you know, they do have a bias. But for the most part, TechCrunch did do a pretty good job putting together a synopsis of an article that came through Bloomberg originally. Anyways, I want to read this to you. And then once again, I want to give you my commentary on it. And then most importantly, I want to hear from you guys. Before we get into this, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my ebooks, as I always say, go pick them up over at jcristina.com forward slash books. If you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you are, click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Tonight is going to be a live night. It is Friday, I believe. So come and hang out with me. Also, if you want more content like this, if you want Starlink content, I put together a Starlink playlist. Click over here when you're done watching this and there's about 190 plus videos specific to Starlink. Also, if you want to just help out the channel, say thank you. There's a little thank you button right down here. You can give a dollar too if you like. If not, that's fine too. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And finally, if you're looking for a VPN, check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there at Peer VPN gave us a promo code, which is jchristina. You can also go to jchristina.com forward slash VPN. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash VPN and get 15% off. If you're looking for a VPN or if you need port forwarding or get a static IP address, these folks will be able to help you out. 
So the housekeeping is all done. Let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying SpaceX won its first contract for Star Shield, the defense focused version of Starlink satellite internet service from the US Space Force. The one year contract has a maximum value of $70 million, a US Air Force representative told Bloomberg. The contract, quote, provides for Star Shield end to end service via the Starlink constellation installation, user terminals, ancillary equipment, network management, and other related services. The award was given on September 1st. According to the DOD or the Department of Defense, SpaceX will receive $15 million by the end of this month, and the contract is expected to support 54, quote, mission partners across the arms of the U.S. military. Satellite-based communication systems and Starlink in particular were thrown into the spotlight during the early months of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. When SpaceX activated the service in Ukraine and sent large shipments of Starlink terminals, Starshield announced last December will hopefully clear up much of the ambiguity around using a commercial service in war operations. I believe in this 100%. When the company announced Starshield, it noted on its website that the service, quote, leverages SpaceX Starlink's technology and launch capabilities to support national security efforts, though providing scant additional details. This normally happens. Indeed, while SpaceX did not comment on the new contract, Musk posted on X that the division between Starlink and Starshield as servicing civilian and defense customers representatively is, quote, the right order of things. I agree with him. The U.S. Space Force has shown equal interest in boosting its satellite internet capacities. Starlink is likely especially attractive because it leverages a prolific architecture of what will eventually be thousands of satellites in low Earth orbit. Having so many assets in space rather than a handful of exquisite satellites means that the overall system is more resilient to attack by adversaries. 100% true. Elon Musk on X posted, quote, Starlink needs to be a civilian network, not a participant to combat. Starshield will be owned by the U.S. government and controlled by the DOD or the Department of Defense Space Force. And that is awesome. That is, I think, how this should be done. This way, Elon doesn't have to get into the mix when it comes to war or anything like that. Then he doesn't get all of these comments. Oh, you are getting deep in the trenches with this war. You're allowing this and not allowing that when it should be the government deciding and not you as a private business. You know, I agree with that 110%. I don't think that he should dictate a war or get involved in a war. And by Elon breaking this up, having Starlink over here and Star Shield over there, well, that just kind of makes sense. Star Shield is going to be owned by the government. They do what they do. And Starlink will be obviously controlled or owned, let's say, by Elon Musk. And he could do whatever he wants to do with that, meaning that that is a business class type of service. It is a residential type of service, maritime, like I said, aviation, that type of thing. Anything having to do with military will be over there on the Star Shield side of things. Now, supposing this contract is only going to run for that one year. After that, what happens to Starshield? I don't know. I have a feeling that the U.S. government is going to love, big capital L-O-V-E, love the Starlink system right? That network, their star shield, their segmented network. That star shield is going to have other capabilities that the regular Starlink satellites don't. It's inevitable, right? So it might have spy type of stuff. It might have other type of equipment on it that the regular satellites don't, whatever it is. I don't care. That is the government. They do what they do. And then the residential, the business, they do what they do. In this way, there's no mixing of things, right? This is where there was a problem before. It ended up being like this amalgam of things where he would do all of these different things and then he would get into a storm over it. 
Well, that's not going to happen, I don't think, as much anymore due to this. So we'll see what ends up happening. I want to know from you, what do you think? What do you think about him helping out people whenever there is a need? There is a disaster on the planet, right? There is a flood. There's a hurricane. There's a war. There's whatever. And he sends a ton of these terminals for humanitarian purposes. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with the whole war thing where he sent a lot of terminals into that war struck in country as quote unquote in a humanitarian type of method, but later on figured out that they were using it for military use. And he's like, wait a second, wait a second. I didn't send all of this equipment for military. I'm not sending my equipment to you to kill people on either side. All right. That's not the purpose of my equipment. I think that's the way he is looking at these things. Now, obviously, I don't know him, but this is the way I read it when I read a lot of his comments and keep up to date with it. Once again, what do you think about this? What do you think? Anyways, guys, if you enjoy this, even the least, throw it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe, as I always say. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll see you in the next one. See you tonight, guys. Bye. Take care.